Do you feel like you're always working too many hours and that you have way too many responsibilities at school? Do you wonder how can you create better work-life balance so you can spend more time with your family and friends or just do the things that you love during the school year, even though it's not summer anymore? <laughs> or do you struggle with like what to say when you're asked to take on more responsibilities than you have time for? Or do you want to step away from a responsibility, but you're worried about sounding mean or disappointing others? If that sounds like you, then stick around because in this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to identify if you are a people pleaser and the four boundary types that you may be or who you may be dealing with in your school life or in your personal life. And make sure you stick around to the end of this episode because I'm going to share with you some boundary scripts and sentence stems that you can use this school year to begin to advocate for yourself, your time, and your mental health. If you're new here, hello, I'm Amber Harper. Welcome to my channel. I'm a full-time kindergarten teacher and a teacher burnout coach, and I help teachers to grow through their burnout so they can live happier and more fulfilled careers and lives, all while creating a sustainable career in education. And before we get started, I want to say a quick thank you to BCS Wilhelms. They left a really sweet review on Apple iTunes podcasts. They said, burned out to burned in. When I first started teaching six years ago, I started looking for podcasts that would inspire me in the classroom. And when I came across Burned In Teacher, I listened to a few episodes and stopped listening because I didn't think I was experiencing burnout at all, and I didn't want to listen. Now that I've gone through teaching through COVID, unappreciative administration, school change, and grade level change, I realized that I had been going through burnout since my third year of teaching. Now that I've realized it and named it, I'm started, I've am started listening again every day, and it has helped me to reinvigorate my love for teaching. Thank you, Amber. You are so welcome. That's what this channel and this uh, podcast is all about, is helping teachers when they need it. You may not be burned out right now as you're listening, but in the future, if you start to see those signs and symptoms, this is what this channel and this podcast is all about. So thank you so much for your ratings and reviews. When you leave a rating and review on Apple iTunes podcasts, it helps other teachers who are struggling to find this podcast. And I would so appreciate if you would be willing to do that for me so that we can spread this burned in message to as many teachers as possible. All right, with that out of the way, I want to start with a quote. I can't remember where I heard it. I don't know if I made it up myself. I don't know if it's a mixture of all of the research that I've done over the years about burnout and sustainable teaching, but here it is. The only people who will get upset with you about setting boundaries are the ones who are benefiting from you having none. And that's what this episode is all about. And if you've been around for a while, you know that I believe that your burnout isn't your fault, but it is your responsibility. And taking responsibility for your burnout is one of the very first steps that you can take to begin to change your life. I talk all about my philosophy in episode 106. You can access that episode right here, or you can check the show notes or the description of this video. And episode 106 of the Burn and Teacher podcast talks all about my philosophy about your burnout being your responsibility and ways that you can begin to take responsibility for your burnout so you don't accept it as your forever reality. So let's dive right in. Are you a people pleaser? All right, here are some very simple ways to tell. If you are always agreeing with anybody who is standing in front of you giving their opinion, you're a people pleaser. If you're apologizing for things that aren't your fault, that's a sign of a people pleaser. I know being from the Midwest myself, we apologize for everything. <laughs> we want to do everything that we can to make everyone around us happy and comfortable. And that even means getting uncomfortable or saying, I'm sorry, just like we say hello whenever you see somebody walking down the hallway. It's like second nature. We got to stop doing that. We've got to stop being people pleasers. If you are not able to say no, if your automatic answer to any question you're asked or any responsibility that you're given is yes, that's definitely a sign that you're a people pleaser. Changing who you are for certain people or making your worth depend on how others see you, that those are also tremendous signs of being a people pleaser. For more information about how you can stop being a people pleaser, I want you to go to this episode of the Burn and Teacher podcast. It's episode 96, where I talk all about why you should stop saying you're a people pleaser and how it is that you can change that self-talk 
so that you can change your actions. All right. We're not going to go deep into what it means to be a people pleaser, like really deep into these topics in this episode, but I cover all of those things in that episode. Now, chances are, because as teachers, we are trying to accommodate so many people throughout the day, our administrators, our coworkers, our students, our parents, our own families, us, there are different boundary types that we encounter every single day. And we also have a boundary type. So the first thing we're going to do now that we've kind of discussed whether or not you are a people pleaser is to identify what boundary type you are and to look for these different boundary types as you're learning how to navigate setting these boundaries for yourself this school year. So there are four different boundary types. There are controllers, avoiders, compliance, and non-responsives. Let's go through each of those really quickly. A controller fails to respect the boundaries of others. And I see you all shaking your heads. Heck yes, we probably already know two or three of these types of uh, boundary types. Um, so we have two different types of controllers, okay? We have aggressive controllers who are outrightly and explicitly controlling. They sometimes may be verbally or physically abusive in order to get you to say yes. Um, I think about my own children, like my biological children. They've never gotten physically abusive, but they will tell me, yes, I'm doing this, or yes, you're going to do this. And that's when, and we even have students like this, right? The next type of controller, though, this is what I feel is the most common. These are manipulative controllers, and they try to get you to say yes by using persuasion, manipulation, guilt, or even trickery, right? Again, going back to our own biological children or the students in our class, they will do anything that they can to try to swindle their way into getting their way, right? But we can also encounter these manipulative controllers in the workplace. And what I'm hoping to do by helping you to identify these boundary types is to raise your awareness so that you can begin to address these boundary types as soon as you identify them, okay? You're gonna get better at this the longer that, that you do this, okay? The second type of boundary type is an avoidant. And I see myself sometimes doing this. And I know that I've seen a lot of teachers that I work with as well, be an avoidant or an avoider. Okay. They say no to the good because they have an inability to ask for help. They do not want to be vulnerable or look weak. They see needs and legitimate wants as something destructive or shameful. Like they don't want to admit what they really want. I Gosh, I see this all the time in so many different capacities as a teacher burnout coach. And they fear being hurt. They fear, fear being let down. Okay, so pay attention to this. And I want you to try to identify whether or not you see these in your own boundary type. And of course, you could have a hybrid <laughs> of, of these boundary types that I'm that I'm addressing today. The third type is a compliant. Oh my gosh. Again, I see this all the time in the education world. They say yes to the bad. All right. So if we ask why they do this, we see that it usually is because of being a people pleaser, number one, that's why we addressed this at the beginning of this episode, but they have a fear of hurting someone else's feelings. They have a fear of rejection. They desire to be dependent. They want people to rely on them. They want to be that superhero. They want that gold star. They fear someone else's anger or they fear punishment. I feel like this is the most common boundary type that we can identify in the world of education. We don't want to upset people. We don't want to let people down. We don't want to make people mad. And those are all stories that we're telling ourselves. And the sooner that we address the stories that we tell ourselves, and we're going to go into those boundary scripts and scenarios here at the end of this episode, the quicker that we can change that narrative in our head, the quicker that we can actually take action to advocate for ourselves so that we can create a sustainable work-life balance between teaching and living life outside of it. And finally, we have the non-responsives, okay? I've also seen this not quite as much as I've seen the others, but non-responsives do not want to hear the needs of others. Now, I do hear a lot from teachers that they struggle with unsupportive administration or even some narcissism in their leadership, and that's where I feel like we would see this non-responsive. So non-responsives do not hear the needs of others. They're so focused on their own needs that they ignore the needs of others, basically, um, they are so absorbed in their own desires and needs that they exclude others. Um, it, it, that's a form of narcissism. And 
I'm, I'm just going to address this. I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. If you are working for or with people who are consistently non-responsives and they do not address your needs or your wants as a teacher and you feel completely unsupported or that your needs are just swept under the rug, this is probably not the best place for you. And what I have said in so many different episodes is that uh, burden and teacher is not all about making you feel like you have to stay where you are. Um, it's not about making you feel like you have to stay in education if it's not the right place for you. What I'm trying to do is to help you to build your self-awareness and clarity on what has happened in the past and what you want to see happen in the future. And if a change needs to be made to a different grade level, which I have done in my own career and it has changed my life, or a different school, which I've also done, or a different district, <laughs> which I've also done, <laughs> Um you got to do what's best for you. And if your needs are not being met because you're consistently being ignored, um, it's time for you to possibly move on. And I, while I know that that's, a, that that's not possible for everybody, hopefully it is an option if you open up your mind to the possibilities that are out there for you. So I have to, I can't move on to the next part of this episode without mentioning those thoughts. So now that we've identified whether or not you're a people pleaser, and the four boundary types that you could be or who you could be dealing with um, in the personalities of other people who you're working with, be it your admin, your coworkers, your students, the parents that you're working with, even people in your personal lives, friends, your partner, your own kids. Um, this is a really important part of building your self-awareness so that now my favorite part of this episode is helping you to actually say no or to step away. Like, what does this look like and what does this sound like? So we're going to start with stating your preferences. And this is why I believe so much in building your self-awareness as a teacher who's struggling with burnout, because if you don't even know what you like or what you want or where you want to be or who you want to be in your life, you may not know yet what you prefer. But here are some sentence stems that I want to give you. You know, we're teachers. We love sentence stems, right? You may be surprised at how simple stating a preference may prevent hurt to you or your mental health or your emotional health in the future. It's pretty simple, we, but I suggest that you practice. So write these down. I like blank. I don't like blank. I would prefer blank or yes or no. And I actually like to add a little bit more to this. Thank you so much for offering blank, but I would prefer blank or I appreciate how you tried blank, but I really didn't like how this happened. So acknowledging them, thank th thanking them for their efforts, if there were some made, <laughs> and then moving on to here's how I would like to see this happen in the future. Again, going back to that quote from the beginning of this episode. The only people who are going to be upset about you setting boundaries are the ones that took advantage of you having none. And we can't be upset for people who cross our boundaries if we've never set them in the first place. And stating your preferences is a really simple first step in beginning to build those boundaries. Here's another one, one of my favorites, showing your truth. Simply being honest. Often we fake being pleasant or not or are not being honest about another person's hurtful behavior because oddly, we don't want to hurt their feelings, which has totally happened in my life. But when we do that, um, you are also adapting to those bad boundaries. Like you're adjusting your boundaries to meet their needs when it's totally invading your boundaries and your needs as a teacher or as whoever you are outside of it. So show your true emotions and be honest. I'm disappointed that, that you said this in the meeting. You know, I was really disappointed that you said that this is going to happen and it didn't, um, or it really hurt my feelings that I heard that you said this, is this true? Or I'm not willing to always pick up your slack when you're never here, or I'm not willing to continue to do these collaborations when I end up doing all of the work. Um, you know, there are so many different scenarios, but Showing your truth and being honest about the fact that you're disappointed or hurt 
helps people to understand they may not know people are so busy living their own lives, going here, going there, doing this, doing that. Sometimes they, they cross boundaries or they say hurtful things and they don't even realize it. Okay. So this is a really good way to show grace and to also say, I, I will not put up with that. Okay. And that leads in really well to our next um, to our next scenario or our next sentence stems are consequences. So people who are in denial and are deaf to words or, or, or of truth, like if you tried to tell people how disappointed you are that this that this thing happened or this thing didn't happen, um, they may only respond to pain or loss, okay? I hear myself saying things like this to my students all the time and my own students. If this behavior continues, this will happen. If this, then that, right? If you talk to me like that again, this will happen or I will. If you cannot control your blank, I will or I will not. Or when you do this thing, I will do this thing. It really does come simply down to if this, then that. But here's the really important kicker. You have to follow through. The more that you talk about consequences, but you don't follow through, the less of a chance that the people who are crossing these boundaries that you have identified are going to keep crossing them because they know that you're just talking. You're just saying words. You're not actually following through with action. So I highly recommend that you think through and maybe step, actually, this leads into our next, our next sentence stems really, really well is to stop and give yourself space to think through your reactions rather, th rather than being knee-jerk or being reactive, okay? And that leads us into, okay, building in that emotional space. So you may need to set up emotional boundaries when the hurt becomes deeply personal and emotional. So you might say, I can't blank if you're going to blank. When your voice is calm, I'll share my thoughts and feelings. Oh my goodness, I say this all the time to my students. When your voice is calm, when your body is calm, we will talk about this, okay? But right now, you are not in a place where you can listen and that we can talk to each other, okay? And I say this next one is probably my favorite. I am not going to argue with you. A lot of times right now with our students and the behaviors that they're displaying in classrooms, they want that argument. They want control. And if you refuse to argue with them, you are taking back control of your own emotions and of the situation. I am not going to argue with you. I'm not willing to argue with you. I won't argue with you. And that kind of goes back to the consequences. I said, if you do this, that this would happen. You did this again. So this is happening, period. So those emotional space boundaries are protecting your emotional health. <laughs> They're protecting your mental health. You are showing that you are mentally strong enough to say no and mean it and to refuse to be taken advantage of. And none of these sentence stems or scenarios have to involve yelling, being rude, or being mean. And that's why I encourage you so much to practice these and give yourself some different scenarios that may come up in your day-to-day -day life, depending on what it is that your work-life situation is, okay? All right, the next one is physical distance. So you may need to actually remove yourself from an argument or a heated situation to separate from the toxic or dangerous situation. There are obviously situations where there could be um, physical danger involved. And of course, you know, it's time for you to like move out of that physical space, right? Like that's happened to me at school before with a student um, where I have to also protect my other students where we've had to leave the classroom. But to in order to protect your mental health, sometimes you actually need to step away. And as I mentioned a minute ago, you will need to give yourself time to cool off and give them time to cool off. So creating that physical distance, you may choose to move to another school. We've already talked about this. If you're dealing with a non-responsive, you may also separate yourself physically from someone else, maybe not going to the teacher's lounge or maybe sitting away from a certain person who is triggering to you. Those are all ways that you can build boundaries without even saying anything. 
you may also, and I know you're here listening to the Burden Teacher Podcast, but you may need to find other people to help you to build stronger boundaries. You know, I have Burden Teacher University, go to burdenteacher.com slash course, where we go very deep into creating clarity. We create self-awareness, we create courage and mental strength so that you know what it is that you want and what you need to protect with those boundaries. But you need, you may need to find a therapist or a friend to confide in or a support group of other people dealing with similar issues. That's why I have the Burden Teacher membership for anybody who enrolls in the Burden Teacher University course. You can join the membership. We have group coaching calls. We have a private Facebook community. So you can get that support from other teachers who are learning how to navigate this new life with all of these new tools and strategies and resources to help them to create a more sustainable career in education. And finally, time. I've mentioned this a little bit here and there. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I need an hour to cool off. I'm going to go for a walk. I'll be back. Or I'm going to go to my classroom. I'm going to close my door. I need some time. This is probably the most underused boundary scenario and it's because we are so reactionary. And this is something that I used to deal with so much whenever I was a, a brand new baby teacher because I had built that habit into my life. I was very defensive. I was very reactionary. I was very knee jerk. And I've learned that there are times where I need to keep my mouth shut and either just walk away or say, I need a minute and I will get back to you on that. And I've even replied to emails when I've been asked to do something where I'm not obligated to say yes or no right away. I have replied to emails or I have replied face-to-face -to, -face to people and said, I need some time to think about this. Can I, can I have a day? Can I sleep on it? You do not, you, you are not required. I'm rarely, are you going to have an urgent situation where you have to reply yes or no right this second? Ask for time, step away, think about it, okay? Pay attention to your body when you're asked to do certain things. Um, here's one more reply that I love. This issue isn't one that I can discuss at this time because this conversation is not productive. I would love to step away and return to this at a later time. So if people are arguing, there's no solution available, then it's time to just step away and try to address it at another time. And when you're considering of saying yes or no to something, um, Pay attention to your body, as I've already mentioned. Ask for time to consider. Already mentioned that. Say no in an email. Sometimes it's easier to politely step away by just sending an email rather than doing it face-to-face. -face. Show appreciation, as I mentioned earlier. Say, thank you so much for considering me. I'm really honored and flattered that you would think that I would do a good job of that, but right now I'm not able to add that to my plate of responsibilities. Do not assume responsibility for other people's feelings. You are not responsible for how other people feel about you saying no. You are only responsible for you and your feelings and your boundaries. I cannot stress this enough. We want everyone around us to feel good, and that is not our responsibility. It is our most important responsibility to keep people safe and to teach, <laughs> if that is your role, whatever your role is, okay? Okay. Ask for help when you need it. There is no sign of weakness or inferiority by asking for help. And sharing solutions, sharing, sharing possible solutions or alternatives. I love this one where you can say, you know, I can't do this, but I could do this. I, I love that way of saying kind of yes and no at the same time. You know, this time doesn't work for me, but if we moved it to this day and time, I think I could make it work, but give me some time to think about it. Um, and know this, it's okay to change your mind. So if you're listening to this episode or watching this episode and you're saying, oh my gosh, I've totally overcommitted myself. I've said yes to three committees. I am this coach and that coach. I also am a teacher and I'm a mentor. I, I took on too much. It's okay to step away. It's okay. Here is your permission slip to say, I I took on too much. I, I can't manage all of this. So I have to say no to this right now. So that's going to take you doing some brain dumping and some prioritizing as far as which ones are the most important to you and which ones then you need to step away from. Now, I have two episodes that go more in depth on what, what you should do when you're considering saying yes and no. The first episode is actually all about when to say yes and when to say no. You can watch that podcast episode here or you can check the show notes. It's episode 57. Um, and it's all about 
how and when to say yes and no. And the next episode I want to I want to recommend is episode nine. This was like early in the Burned In Teacher podcast world. I interviewed my friend Brittany and she shared with us five rules that she created for herself as a great example of how to protect your time and your mental health. So that's it, guys. That's everything I have for you today about how it is that you can build better boundaries around your work and life balance so that you're not feeling like you are completely out of balance, overwhelmed. I get this question all the time about not having enough time to do all the things that you are being asked to do or that you have said you're going to do. So definitely identify if you are a people pleaser, identify your boundary type and the boundary types that you may be dealing with throughout your day-to-day life as a teacher, and then explore different ways that you can advocate for yourself and your emotional and mental health because you are more than a teacher. And unless you are enjoying working all the time and making everyone else happy except yourself, you have to say no. And that can look and sound many, many different ways. Now, if you're looking to move through your burnout, but you don't know where to start, you can download chapter one of my book, Hacking Teacher Burnout, and I will help you take your first few steps to moving through your burnout. Go to burnedinteacher.com slash free chapter. Or if you've listened to this episode and you are ready to start setting boundaries, but you're still struggling with finding clarity and confidence and courage that you need to begin to advocate for yourself, your time and your life outside of teaching, I teach you how to gain all of those things plus so much more in my Burned In Teacher University course. Go to burnedinteacher.com slash course. I will put all of the links to the resources and the episodes I've mentioned in the description and the show notes so you can find them easily. And if you're watching on YouTube, please leave any questions in the comments below. I'm always happy to help you guys out. And anyone out there watching or listening, please follow me on Instagram at Burn and Teacher. Send me a DM, say hi and ask questions. I love hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed this episode and you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a like and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes every single week of the Burn and Teacher podcast. And of course, if you're listening on any other podcast platform, please consider hopping over to Apple Podcasts and leaving a rating and review. Either of these actions help struggling teachers to find the support that they need. All right, everybody, I'll see you next week. And until then, take a deep breath because you just took another step to becoming a burned-in teacher. Burn on.